Hey, all right, hi guys, I'm Sandra Cohn. I'm Elena S. Blair, and we are the ladies behind Lady Boss Workshops. Yeah, and so here we are with another video for you. This week we want to talk to you about SEO. So last week, last week, we um, went into the Facebook group and we said, okay, you guys, what are, what are, the, what are you struggling with the most? And um, this actually came out as number one, tips on SEO, how to do it, how to rank better. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's what we're going to talk to you about today. So today we're going to share three easy steps to creating an SEO and Google friendly website. And can I just interject and say SEO stands for search engine optimization. Okay, you're going to say that? Thing. Okay, so good. We have notes here. All right. <laughs> Sometimes people don't know what that is. No, that's saying. a good yeah. thing. So we should talk about that. So yeah. yeah. So like Elena said, it stands mm -hmm. for search engine optimization. And really, it's just the process by which search engines like Google connect you know, their readers with content that their readers want to find. So there are certain ways that search engines do this. Um, and those ways have kind of changed and evolved over the years. It used to be that um, really search engines were just looking for certain keywords. And so if you were, say, a newborn photographer in Seattle, you wanted to make sure your website said newborn photography, Seattle, all over it, so that when the, the Google bots started searching for those keywords, they would find you. Mm -hmm. Now, this is something that everybody used to do. And... Google got wise too, because what was happening is uh, the individuals and companies were starting to do what was known as keyword stuffing. And I know we've all seen this. So people would write a blog post, for example, that would be like, the title would be like, family, Seattle, yeah. well, studio, I, portrait, photography. Well, you can a little bit. I'm going to explain it in just okay. a second. But so they'd say like, Seattle family, photography, studio, photography, whatever. And then the copy on the on the blog post or the words in the blog post would be like, look at how cute this fam the Seattle family is that came in for their Seattle studio family photography <laughs> session. Yes. You know, like, and it was a really it kind was of awkward. a challenging thing to do as a as a write a, a photographer writing your blog is you're like, hi, put these words yeah. into my into all my blog posts. And the problem with keyword stuffing in that way is at the, at the time, it was great for SEO, but it wasn't great for actual real people reading your blog. Nobody wants to read a blog post right like that. So so Google knows that, search engines knew that, and so they've been changing their algorithms and changing what they're looking for, and we're moving away from content. So I'm going to just share that with you right now. It's going to blow your mind. So what is the number one thing that you can be doing right now to help your SEO? And that is sharing good content, relevant content. Now listen, you don't have to take my word for it, even though I preach content all day long. Um, this is actually on Google's own website. So Google has a tool called Webmaster Tools and they, um, where they kind of guide you through everything you need to know about creating your website. And on one of their pages, which is entitled, Steps to Creating a Google-Friendly Site, <laughs> Um, they have a step-by-step -step outline for best SEO practices. And coming in at number one, you guys, is create high-quality content. And they go on to say, I'm going to read this because I don't want to mess it up, <laughs> that um, in order to rank high in searches, you need to provide high-quality content on your pages, especially your homepage, this is the single most important thing you can do. That's what Google says. I'm just going to repeat that. The single most important thing that you could be doing right now on your website to help your SEO is just creating good content. So in which, re how awesome is if that? If you think about what that means, because that can be like, well, what does that mean? It means that what you're creating is something relevant to the people that you're trying to talk to, the people that you're speaking to, so that they want to actually stay on your website. Because if you don't have good content, people are going to come and they're going to bounce. And they actually keep track of bounce rates. They don't like yeah. when your website doesn't keep people there. So if you have valuable content on your website, it's going to help bring you up in that SEO game. Yeah, and it works. Like, we started doing this strategy with you yes. two years ago, so, one year ago. Yeah, so um, interestingly enough, so Sandra and I, I think we've, we keep saying this, we have different zones of genius, which is why we team up so well together. So I grew my business on social media, she grew her business on SEO, and we've been cross um, you know, training each other to, to use each other's strategies to build our businesses up. And so, yes, I started blogging um, 
it's, it's probably been it's been about two years two yeah. years this fall um, and 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 uh, making my my home pages and just pictures now it's like all of this relevant content for my readers um, welcome to go to my website everything is public hers too and then um, started to blog more intentionally not just sharing sessions which I do also do but uh, sharing content that would serve my clients, blogging my, for my clients once a week, and also serving the educational And clients. then what happened to them? I am, so I, but I'll back up and say <laughs> that before this, I had paid somebody to go in and SEO my website, and I still wasn't on the first page of Google, um, and until I, when I started doing this, now I'm on the first page of Google for all my relevant searches. Yeah, it works, because it works. Google... And I wasn't before. Yeah. All my clients... I mean, occasionally I would get clients from Google. Um, I grew my entire business all on social media. Yeah. That was where I got my clients. So now I get them from both. Now I have so many. Which is great. I mean, yeah. that's what you want to do. So yeah. um, you want to optimize every every platform. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So it just you guys, it totally works. Now listen, you might be thinking, okay, Snapchat. great. I need to put good content. What does that even mean? Well, I'm going to break it down for you right now and give you three things. And we have a freebie for you at the end, so don't stop watching. Yeah, this is going to, it's a really good freebie, too. Um, so three things that you can do right now to improve your SEO. So first thing you want to so do. Get that paper out. Yeah. Put this down. Here we go. No excuses. First thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you're, like they just said, best thing you can do is have high quality content, especially on your homepage. So you want to go back and take a deep dive into your homepage. Make sure that it is full of good content, uh, particularly about what you do and where you're located. Um, we look at websites all the time. We, do, we did a live website review for our Kelby One class, and we see this all the time where people aren't clearly stating what it is they do and where they're located. So A, that's confusing for people trying to find you. I mean, they might come upon your website and think your photos are beautiful, but if they have no idea where you're located, they don't know if you're a good match for them. Mm -hmm. But it's also really bad for SEO because it doesn't give Google anything to read. I always tell people, remember, Google cannot read your pictures. You can have a ton of beautiful pictures up there. Google can't read your pictures. You need to have words on your site that your clients can read and that Google can read that tell what you do and where you do it. Now, how do you feel about naming your pictures? Well, I was just going to get into okay. that because I do that. Yeah, oh, you should. But but listen, so whenever I start talking about SEO, I know that people want to hear some like secret sauce, add this list of keyword phrases in Kinda the background. Like when someone asks you, how did you yeah. lose 20 pounds? And they want you to say, well, I, I have this one this. pill that you can take and you're going to lose 20 pounds. But no, it's yeah. a strategy. It's a strategy. It work. It so takes. like, yes, there's, we can have, well, and we will, we can, we'll do multiple posts about this. We'll talk about metadata. We'll talk about this. Yes, so much but goes into SEO. Remember what Google says, the number one thing you can be doing is content. So should you be going in and naming your pictures? Absolutely. You should. And what should you name them with? You should name them with what you do and where you're located. Right? Sandra Cohn, Studio Newborn Photography, Seattle, Washington, mm -hmm. for starters. Okay? Absolutely, you should be doing that. But in the copy on your homepage, you also need to be having engaging content so that when people do come to your website and they see it, they give them something to read. Tell them a little bit about yourself. On my front page of my website, it's very clear right away I have pricing, I have book now, I have portfolios, I talk about why I don't post babies in my work. I have a lot of really rich content on that homepage of my website. It's important for my clients, it's important for Google. So that's the number one thing you should do. The number two thing that you need to do right now is clean up any tricky or confusing language that you have on your website. Now, people do this all the time. We all wanna be different, we all wanna be little shining stars or whatever, and so we'll go into our website. I'll tell you how you can be a shining star yeah. in another video. <laughs> another video. It's not by being tricky. Don't be tricky. Yeah. Like, like if you're if you have a, a website and you have a you know a banner at the top that um, is a navigation bar, and you know be clear with where where those pages are going to. Have pricing. Have your portfolio. Have your blog. Don't have things like check it out. Love. Yeah, yeah, I beauty. Love, I mean, yeah, or like, or whatever. And it's like, well, what someone who, um, and that's the thing we have to remember that we don't, we're not speaking to our peers. Ideally, you're speaking to a, a client that doesn't know a lot about photography. So, yeah, so um, be crystal clear. Yeah, price. tell them price. That's what they're looking for. They want to know investment. You can say, but just say price. Yeah, and I say session info and then have it in there. But yeah, well, that's still that's really clear. Yeah, yeah, you know? like mm -hmm. that stuff they need to know about. But but get rid of the cutesy 
fun language. It, it's not working for you. It's going to hurt your SEO. And this is how it hurts your SEO. And Elena kind of mentioned this earlier, is that when people come to your website, um, Google is looking to make sure that they're engaged. If they're engaged with your content, that tells Google that your site is worth putting right. up in the search engine. It's for relevancy. Yeah. And so if people are coming to your site and it's all this like weird, confusing language that they don't know, they don't know where you are, they have, they can't find anything, they're going to click off. And then that's going to tell Google that your site isn't worth promoting in the search engines. So uh, cleaning up that language, being crystal clear about what you do and where you do it, those are really, really important things to do. Now here's the third absolute thing that is like SEO gold, it will change your business and I can already hear the groans before I even say it. But that is blog. You have to blog. <laughs> you have to blog. This is your job. You have yes. to blog. This is your your business. You've Absolutely. Got to promote it. And like, listen, you guys. I read the photography forums too. I'm on the Facebook too, and I see people talking about how blogging is dead all the time. I saw reason somebody why. recently say, "You don't have to blog anymore. You can just Instagram story." I'm like, "No, no. that's not true. That's you, just not true. No. Yeah, it, there's not a way to replace it." Now, listen. There is a way, however, that you can blog smart, smartly. Yes. Smarter. Smarter. Smartish. Um, smartish. Is, and that is use your blog as a place to provide really good, relevant content for your clients. Mm -hmm. So a blog is where you can be getting on and talking to your ideal client, educating them about your sessions, educating them about your philosophy, about how you work, about workflow. It's where you can be answering their questions. You're really serving them. You're serving them. Yeah, like, like what do you need to know to get ready for yeah. your session? Or what do you need to know to have a really successful session? Those are the sorts of things that you can be blogging about. And when you start blogging like that, using your blog for something more than just, oh, look at these cute babies. More than just sharing client sessions. Look at this yeah. client session. It turns into a resource that your clients are going to come back to over and over and over again. And that's going to tell Google that you have really good, relevant content. Remember, what did they say? It is the single most important thing that you can be doing for your SEO to do it. And um, they're gonna bump, it's going to bump you up. That's what's really going to change your SEO for the better. Now listen, I know people are growing. Everybody hates blogging. And one of the reasons people hate blogging is because they never know what to talk about. So I went in and I created a list of 52 blog post prompts that every newborn maternity family photographer can use. 52. And one so that means week. one per week for an entire year. So we're going to put the link to get that list below this video. Totally go in and download it. Just start scheduling them out. Blog, you guys. It will absolutely change your SEO. Don't you think? For the best. And what I think is really, what I hope that you're seeing is that between SEO and social media is that what every algorithm and the Google, who is basically an algorithm, likes is good high quality engagement. Mm -hmm. And that's because if you're putting stuff out there that isn't helping anybody, isn't serving anybody, then it it's not relevant. It's not relevant. So Yeah, you're gonna get the boot mm -hmm. by the algorithms. By all the algorithms. Yeah. So you guys download the cheat sheet. Fifty two. I'm downloading it. Oh, I'm actually downloading it. Too. She was like, this is a really these are some ideas I didn't even thought of. Yeah. Fifty two ideas that's like no excuses. Yeah. And the way that we do it is we, we do them ahead of time. So like we I set a time aside every month that I'm going to do my monthly blogs and I just sit there and do it. So I did it in December this year and blogged for like four months worth of blogs. Yeah. It was bananas. It but get the cheat sheet. Just really relevant. Yeah. Just make sure it's really good content. Um, and start blogging, and then come back and let us know how it's working yes. for you. Okay? Thanks, All right. Guys. So you guys, as always, we want thumbs up. Yeah. Leave us a comment. Please. Subscribe. Subscribe. Share. Share. Tell all your friends. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. See you later. See you next week. Yep.